<laughs> call the meeting to order. I want to welcome everybody here. I'd like to call on Councillor Penner to bring the opening, please. Thank you. Well, it's been a hectic couple of days for the news cycle. First, our incumbent mayor of 12 years announces he will not be seeking re-election, followed up by two councillors announcing they will be running for mayor. Although we are not certain of the outcome, we are certain there will be big changes come fall. Thank you to Mr. Mayor Gertzen for your leadership over the past 12 years. It is not easy being in the public eye, particularly on a municipal level, as it is so close to the people we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, but you've handled it well. Thank you. As for the mayoral race, it is exciting that people will have a choice for the next Mayor Steinbeck, particularly because there are clear differences between the two current candidates when it comes to spending, as their voting records indicate. I'm looking forward to finding out which direction taxpayers of Steinbeck want to go. And this opens up at least two spaces on council and will hopefully encourage people to run for city council. For those who have been considering running, go for it. Take a chance. Win or lose, it is essential for the democratic process. In fact, I think people who run in an election and lose don't get the credit they deserve. It is a risk to put your name out there, and yet the whole system loses credibility if there are no both winners and losers. In closing, it is already shaping up to be an exciting election come fall, and I, for one, can't wait to see how it all plays out. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Penner, for your comments, and I, for one, am enjoying going to be enjoying <laughs> those sidelines. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've always said there's nothing like watching politics when you're not quite in it. Yeah. So we'll see. But thank you. All right. Uh, Council, we do have the agenda in front of us. I'd like to propose a slight change, and that move number seven up to number 4.5. Uh, Actually, at 5.5, uh, can I have a motion to approve the, uh, the man, I'm losing my, my words already. A motion to approve the uh, amended agenda. Councillor Funk, seconded by Councillor Fair. Any discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Carried. All right, we have business arising from the minutes, and this is just a clarification, and Mr. Workentine, I'll ask you to just briefly do that. Uh, a clarification in regards to variation file 2018-03. Uh, this is on page six. Uh, in fact, Mr. Workington, what I'll do is I will summarize and then you can correct me if, you, if you'd like. Sure. Uh, and that is, uh, uh, at the previous meeting, we had a motion to approve and it was defeated, but we did not have a motion to deny, which was not approved. So we need to approve, if we want the same intention to move forward, we need to uh, have a motion in regards to that variation to deny uh, to move forward. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct, and that is standard procedure when there are particular circumstances uh, like that. Thank you. So, Council, our intention is obviously clear with the previous Council meeting, but to uh, be more clear in the minutes, uh, I'd ask that we then uh, have a, uh, a motion to deny for that specific variation. Is there someone willing to move that? Councillor Fair? Seconded by Councillor Siemens. Any discussion? Uh, yes, just for those that uh, maybe are not clear on it, that there was a request uh, to uh, of council to grant a variance for of uh, to 15 feet front yard on a property on first street for development and so the motion was made and it was uh, defeated and so we need to make a motion now to deny the request so that we can finish that so that's what I'm doing. Thank you. Anything further Councilor Siemens? Yes sir. Anything further from council? All those uh, call for the question. All those in favor of deny? All those opposed? Thank you. Carried. Mr. Workington, was that correct? That is now complete. Thank you. Uh, I would ask, though, that uh, Mr. Mayor, that uh, Council now consider the minutes yep. of the previous meeting. All right, thank you. Uh, minutes for May 1st. I need them accepted as amended with this due variation. Councillor Siemens, second by Councillor uh, Penner. Any discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. All right. Let's move to our delegation, and we have uh, Staff Sergeant uh, Leninga here. Thank you for coming. I'll ask you to take the podium. You're here to uh, just give us a brief update. Yes, thank you. I'll be referring to the uh, stats as provided for January 1st to December 31st, 2017. This is timely in that I believe you're discussing our annual performance plan tonight. 
So I'll also be, uh, just when I speak of the stats, I'll be uh, mentioning them in terms of uh, your priorities. So one of the priorities being traffic. So I'm kind of pleased to say that impaired driving is down from 62 in 2016 to, 2000 in, to 44 in 2017. And I say kind of because by no means do I believe that we've then put a uh, stop to this problem. Uh, impaired driving continues to be an issue in our area. It has already been this year. Um, and I can tell you for the entire area that I police, we're still, or that I'm responsible for, I suppose, that we're still around 62. We've been there every year for about five years. We've been between 60 and 62. So while I'm glad to say that impaired driving has been down, um, at the same time, I, by no means do I feel we've conquered this issue. Uh, traffic accidents, so those are the ones that we're attending, are also down. Uh, pleased to see that traffic offenses are up from 567 to 744. Um, you know, so with respect to traffic, and I also think that goes a long way towards our visibility initiative. Um, I think those numbers are very positive. Um, unfortunately, nothing new to report on the traffic section. I know that's something we're all waiting for, and I believe that will also lead to our uh, visibility initiatives in the sense that even if they're going to Falcon Lake or St. Malo or working here, um, they're going to be driving through our area. And by doing that, there'll be more police officers visible, and I'm hoping we'll even curb uh, some of the behaviors even more. Uh, we're extensively, and I'll probably report at this at the next meeting, but extensively using uh, MPI funding to uh, augment our own resources. So I think you probably saw in the stand back online and the other media outlets that we uh, issued 130 tickets just in the month of April related to cell phone use just within the city of Steinbeck. Um, an incredible number, a uh, disappointing number, but a number that tells me we just have to keep on uh, using enforcement. It seems to be the only uh, thing that's hopefully going to work. So I think our traffic initiative, uh, you know, we've put a lot of great work into that. Um, the drug enforcement, fairly you know, consistent, 64 to 57. Uh, our GIS unit, uh, May 1st, has a new corporal in it, and uh, he comes from uh, our headquarters unit in Winnipeg. A great deal of experience that I think is going to directly benefit uh, our GIS unit. And again, thank you for your support of our GIS unit. And property crimes, um, yeah, I'm showing a reduction in, I think, all categories except for one. Theft unders from 278 to 257. Um, theft overs from 9 to 2. Break and enters from 91 to 81. Uh, mischief for property is the one that went up, and it went up by 1, 233 to 234. And these are a lot of our, sometimes our petty crimes, but I think the victims would never consider them a petty crime. Uh, and it drives me nuts. It's definitely something I'd like to get, you know, get to zero, and that we continue to work at that. Theft of vehicles from 41 to 30. So again, another reduction. So in terms of, you know, your priority of reducing property crimes, I think we've achieved that for 2017. And essentially that's, that's it. Very good. Thank you. Are there questions from Council to uh, staff, our Staff Sergeant? Councillor uh, Siemens and then Councillor Funk. Uh, thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, can you uh, speak to uh, the traffic accident? It seems like Steinbeck Online is, and others are reporting almost on a daily basis on the ongoing traffic accidents that are taking place, mostly on Brant and, and Number 12. Can you? But, uh, but it, our traffic acts are dropping according to this. Are these numbers where you need to attend? Is that what it is or just? Yeah, these are the ones that are actually reported to us. So if they're reported to us, then we have a file open. So you can see, uh, but I, I can concur that there's an incredible amount of accidents here. Um, and we have initiatives based on intersections, on speeding, on just about everything you can think of we're trying to do in order to uh, um, you know, combat that. But uh, accidents continue to be an issue. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Funk. Uh, thank you through you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to uh, commend uh, Staff Sergeant uh, Laniga and the staff for the job they do. They've done a great job. And as you can see, many of the numbers are down. Uh, uh, many of the incident numbers are down. And uh, traffic initiatives are up. Uh, I just want to, I do want to ask, though, um, we have talked on occasion about meth and, and the problem meth is having. And, uh, how are you reacting, or how are you dealing with that, and, and how is that affecting our city? I think it's very much affecting our city. I think uh, 
probably at least for several of the last past meetings that I've been coming to, I've identified uh, some of the uh, theft of vehicles as well as mischief to properties as being related to people going. Unfortunately, meth is relatively cheap. It's about $10 to be high for a day. It's a long high, it's about 12 hours. So unfortunately, we are finding that youth are going into vehicles, stealing some cash, stealing, you know, just the petty crime stuff and you know, using that for meth. So absolutely, we're seeing the effects of meth within our community. Uh, you know, some of the, even shoplifting and items such as that, have seen an increase and that's directly related to, to meth in our community. Thank you. Further question, <coughs> Councilor Fair. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I, I don't have a question. I, I, I just, uh, as a, a staff sergeant, I was making this report, I, I couldn't help but, but feel the, the heart throb of, of the RCMP as they patrol them. They, they feel that the, the, their presence is going to decrease crime. And I applaud that. Not that they're necessarily sitting around every corner and trying to nab somebody, but their, their presence is, is enough to, there's still enough respect that it's going to decrease crime. Uh, I, wish, I wish it was even more so, but I applaud you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions or comments? Uh, obviously, uh, I, I, just looking at these stats, you can see that uh, there's still a lot of work to do, but you can see many trends trending down, which is really positive to see. I, I, and I appreciate it, that it speaks to a few things. It speaks to uh, what's going on in our community, but it also speaks to the work that uh, the RCMP are doing. So I want to just say thank you on behalf of Council and our citizens for the tremendous work you do and the sacrifices that you make to make our city safer, and, and we appreciate that very much. So. Uh, with that, anything in closing? Just, I just want to thank you for all your support. Um, it's a, you're, this has been the, the group that I've worked with since I've been here. And I'm yeah. just very appreciative of everything you've done for us. And all of you as councillors, thanks for your support. Thank you for your support of Headway and just everything you've done for us. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Warkentine, uh, just a question in regards to uh, setting the priorities. Uh, I know uh, Staff Sergeant Leninga talked about that. When is the time that we normally do that? Is that in fall or is that? Uh... Uh, well, the, uh, the, uh, the list of the 2018-2019 uh, annual performance plan has been provided for Council on page 39 of the agenda package. Uh, it is up to Council. Uh, council has chosen to do both options, either uh, address them today or defer them to uh, to another time after uh, they've given the uh, priorities further consideration. It's up okay. to Council. All right. Council, how would you like to proceed? Obviously, we've seen some tremendous success by what the RCMP are working on. Uh, are you comfortable with the, the uh, present uh, community priorities that are stated on page 40, or would you like time to discuss them, or uh, should we allot them to another uh, time for discussion? Thoughts? Councilor Swagstra. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think these are good priorities. This is what we've set the last, uh, the last few years, and visibility of police, organized crime, property crimes, traffic. Um, we've had this as our priority for some time. There's still more work to be done in these areas, so I think it's reasonable that we continue uh, with these priorities. Thank you. Councilor Funk. Yes, I would concur with uh, Councilor Swagstra, too. As you can see with the incident report, because of these priorities, mm -hmm. many of these incidents are going down. So these priorities are working for us, they're working for our, our members, and I think, uh, I think we should just go ahead as, as okay. uh, Can I take that as a motion then? Thank you. Is there a seconder? Councilor Swagstra, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, no, we've had these, uh, we've had these uh, priorities for some time now. And uh, they're working very well. Numbers are going down. We, we meet and get uh, uh, Staff Sergeant Lanaga's uh, report every month, and he's, he's working very, very hard. And he's, and he's working very hard at these priorities and bringing, bringing the incident reports down. He's also working very hard on traffic. And that, that is why sometimes the numbers are going up, because as they work hard on traffic, they're also finding more things wrong and more, more offenders. And so that number will climb. Hopefully, it's going to go down as people find out that there's, there's a, a, a cost to crime. But I, I think that uh, he's doing a great job with his, mem his, his staff and his members. And I think uh, we need to just get behind him, give him these priorities again. Thank you. Further discussion? 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would concur. I mean, the fact is, is that uh, we uh, have seen some impressive work by the RCMP in the last number of years uh, under the leadership of Staff Sergeant Laninga. Uh, these are our priorities as a council. These are areas that we have identified. We want police visibility. We want to address organized crime. That is why uh, we had given the funding for the GIS unit, which is active and involved and is making a difference. Uh, we recognize the importance of cracking down on property crime and uh, uh, the traffic numbers are quite clear that this is a priority of the city and it will continue to be. So for all these reasons, it makes sense to, uh, to continue with these priorities. Thank you. Further discussion? I just do want to add that early in June, can't say the date because we don't want to alert too many people, but we are having a traffic safety day. And that too will be a, a time when we can, we can show uh, the safety in our community. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Call for the question. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Council, I think we are very lucky to have the, the staff that we have here and the staff sergeant that we have here. We, uh, we see clear uh, communication. We see clear results. Very good. All right. Let's move to number five. The, uh, sorry, number six. Uh, the variation V2018-06. This is in regards to 66 Edgewood Street on page seven. I will close the council meeting, open the public hearing. Mr. Workington. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, this is application for variance file V-2018-06 for property with civic address of 66 Edgewood Street. Uh, the owner and applicant for the variance is uh, Theodore Sawatsky. Purpose of the variance is twofold. Firstly, to allow a rear yard setback of 12.35 feet, whereas the RLD residential low density zone requires a minimum of 25 feet. Secondly, to allow a shed to be within 1.8 feet of the rear property line, whereas a minimum of two feet is required in the uh, residential low density zone. Uh, the applicant has constructed a sunroom uh, on the property and the addition is too close to the property line. Notices as required under the Planning Act have been issued. Uh, there uh, are two pieces of correspondence that Council had uh, placed in the agenda package uh, and a third objection has been received that council has been provided in their mail bins uh, earlier this week. Um, with respect to, uh, to, the, uh, to the application, uh, the rear yard variance uh, arises due to the construction of the house addition on the subject property uh, and uh, I would, uh, from an administration perspective, matters relating to building permits are not normally considered as part of a variance application. However, an extenuating circumstance with this file is that the required building permit for the completed addition has not been obtained. Uh, administration is not prepared to consider the application for a permit until the matter of the variance has been considered by Council. Um, and uh, as far as uh, uh, the implications of the, uh, of the consideration, uh, should the variance be approved uh, with the building permit considered, it is anticipated that significant deconstruction of the addition would be necessary to evaluate the status of the structure and foundation in accordance with city and building code requirements. Uh, and therefore, administration is recommending firstly to approve uh, the requested rear yard setback for the shed subject to the owner relocating the fence for the property to be within the property boundaries. Uh, and secondly, the recommendation is that council deny the requested variance for the addition. Thank you. Do we have uh, someone representing the applicant here or the applicant? Do we have someone here representing the applicant or the applicant themselves? Seeing none, is there anyone wishing to further object to this file or questions? I, I you do? <laughs> take, please take the podium. Sorry. Uh, state your name and address. Um, my name is Kim Coop and I live on Alderwood Crescent, so I received a notice. I didn't know you could just put a letter in your bin. So I good. came you, in person. You can oh, come well. here, yeah. Um, so I, just to clarify, it's been a while since I've been at a council meeting, mm -hmm. but is what he's saying that um, he's asking for you guys to deny the sunroom part and for them to take it down or what, I'm sorry, I just want clarification as to that part. The, the Mr. Warkin, did you want to clarify what your recommendation in, is? In like plain terms. <laughs> in plain terms, yeah. uh, the recommendation from administration is essentially yes to, uh, to that city council deny the requested variance for the addition. Uh, that would result in uh, 
uh, further requirements to uh, deal with the addition that has uh, not obtained the required permit. Okay. So uh, we saw the structure go up to the house, and um, have, have any of you driven by it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the <laughs> there's just a lot of things that probably don't meet code. So there's no overhang. Um, the vinyl siding is not attached properly. It's expanded in heat, things like that. Um, the rafters, when they went on, they were about every six inches apart. So probably spent twice as much money on the rafters if they could have just built it properly to begin with. So I don't want to knock anybody for what they're trying to do, but sometimes the process of following the rules just to build something properly, you know, if they would have got people that to do it properly with what they spent on what they did, they could have probably got a pretty decent um, sunroom that met whatever the city's codes were. So I didn't know you guys had driven by because I had pictures on my phone to show you, but <laughs> that was all. I just, it just doesn't really, um, there's too many things that don't look like they um, met building code. Yeah. Good, thank you. Yeah. Anyone else wishing to object or have any questions? Yeah. Please state your name and address. Uh, my name is Maria Gay. I live on Fernwood Bay. Uh, it seems this is not the first time this has happened in this community where people build without permits because one, you need then either to meet spec, you need code, you need inspectors, and whatever. And then all of a sudden they need a variance or there's a mess and people complaining. And these people then feel, oh, poor me. Uh, it will cost me to tear down my structure or move some fencing or something else. If they followed proper rules, then this would not have happened. Why are, is there nobody that checks up on these things beforehand? Who constructed it? Because usually a construction company or someone that's doing rentals would know this but people like to just go ahead and do it and pay the consequences later. And I'm glad you have to make the final decisions, but really use wisdom and common sense when you deal with these people and tell them, maybe it, is some, somebody going to check this now and inspect it if it is up to code? Thank you. Uh, that, thank you for your I comments. it's sufficient. Thank you. Any other, anyone else wishing to object or have any comments? Seeing none, I will close the uh, public hearing and open the council meeting. Council, how would you like to proceed? Councillor Swagstra. I'll make the motion that we approve the administration recommendation that we deny the requested rear yard setback for the addition and approve the rear yard setback for the shed subject to the owner relocating the fence for the property to be wholly within the subject property boundaries. Thank you. Is that a seconder from Councillor Siemens? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. There's an old saying that, uh, you know, it's, it's better to uh, beg forgiveness than to ask permission. Uh, that saying does not hold true when it comes to getting a building permit or a variance. Um, in this case here, this is a clear case of, uh, of someone not following uh, the rules of the city. The reality is that when you're going to build onto your house, when you're going to add on a sunroom, you need a permit. You need to, you need to make that application. And uh, this individual did not, uh, did not get a permit. Uh, we see here that uh, the individual was notified on June 6, 2017, received a letter that we have a copy of here uh, telling them that, they're in, that they need a permit, that they're in violation, and the construction just continued. And so now we're faced with the situation. There is no obligation for us to approve this. And if that means the sunroom is coming down, well, then it's coming down. Uh, the message here is that if you want to expand your house, you want to add on to it, don't assume that you're going to get a variance just because it's already there. That's not a good enough reason. And so it makes sense to, uh, to go with the administration recommendation here. Um, and just adding on too about you know, the fence not, you know, not even being within the subject property boundaries, that has to move. And so uh, that's subject to, uh, you know, that, that's a condition of them uh, uh, of allowing the 0.2 of a foot we're allowing for the shed, which is a very minor variance. Uh, but still, uh, these, are, these are significant issues here. And I should add, to not even show up to the public hearing. Uh, that makes the decision even more straightforward. If you're going to apply for a variance, no matter what it is, you should be here in order to uh, answer questions. Because I had questions, and now they're not getting answered. So this is what we should do. Thank you. Councillor Siemens. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. There's uh, same uh, feelings as Councillor Swags was very disappointed in the fact that uh, the applicant did not show up to address the issues uh, before Council. There are more questions uh, as well. 
I also uh, drove by the property and I agree with uh, comments made as uh, the visual aspect is, is one thing, but also the construction. Uh, we don't know whether it was built to code. We set uh, standards as a city for a reason so that uh, we can address the building codes, the foundation, uh, all the different aspects of uh, an addition. This isn't a sunroom more than it is an addition to a house. So, uh, and it like they use for. Again, uh, last June there was notice, there's ample notice given to the builder or the homeowner to stop construction. Again, this February, uh, this is a dangerous precedent. If we do allow this uh, variance, number one, is one thing, but uh, we, if we allow this, it's a precedent now that we say that it's okay to do this. It's not okay to do this. Uh, we have a lot of the rules uh, and regulations as you know, within our bylaws set forward. And uh, one of the objections that we received is from the developer who developed that, uh, uh, that area and uh, very concerned because that's not the type of construction uh, that he is looking for, that they were looking for when they developed that area. So uh, I think it is uh, absolutely within our right and, and what we should be uh, denying the request for the variation. Thank you. For the discussion, Councillor Fair. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, there is so many things wrong with this file. Among them are that there was no en no engineering done. Uh, it was simply built on on piers, and so I think uh, uh, there is like and, and I, I agree with the, what's already been said. Uh, the applicant, you would have expected the applicant to be here to defend his case, and there may be information that we don't know, uh, but every, all the information that we have would point to the fact that somebody blatantly went against what our, our codes are, and so I I, I couldn't support. Uh, uh, them going ahead with this, so I, I'm going to uh, support the motion. Thank you. Further discussion? Anything in closing? No. Council, I obviously hear uh, what you're saying, and it is clear that uh, if you want to build in the city and you want to build well, uh, you are welcome. Uh, if you want to uh, not ask permission and go forward without uh, the required approvals and engineering and expert advice, it won't work. And uh, this is a clear indication that that, will, uh, that is the case. Uh, this should not be approved. All those in favour of the motion? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Mr. Workening, just a clarification. When it comes to uh, that structure itself, what is the process now that uh, takes place? Uh, the... Uh Results of Council's decision will be provided to the City's building inspection staff who will then proceed to work with the owner to uh, uh, correct the deficiencies as required uh, with the addition not being approved. Uh, the uh, builder will have no option but to, uh, to remove the structure. Thank you. All right. We now move to 6B, which actually has been po postponed. Is that correct, Mr. Workentine? I'm sorry? Uh, 6B, uh, Rockwood Street, uh, 426. Yes, that, uh, yes the, uh, the applicant has, uh, has requested a postponement of that file to a future council meeting. Thank you. Then we'll move to 8A, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Okay, well, we've actually gone through that already. We'll move to 8B, that's the 127 uh, Industrial Road on page 41. Mr. Workentine. Uh, this is uh, an offer to purchase that uh, is being provided to Council for its consideration for uh, the uh, sale of 127 Industrial Road. Uh, the uh, offer to purchase has been provided, uh, I'm sorry, by uh, Hijack LTD uh, for the purchase price of $75,000. Uh, this is the list price to the property. Uh, all of the uh, relevant documents related to the offer to purchase and the uh, subsequent sales agreement uh, are provided in uh, the package for Council. Uh, if approved, the uh, possession date would be July 15th. Recommendation is to approve. Thank you. Council, how would you like to proceed? Councillor Fair? Move to approve. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Siemens. Any discussion? Uh, no, I think it's all been said. We've got these properties and they're incubators and it's great for people to be able to affordably get into it. Thank you. Anything further? Anything further from Council? All those in favour? Carried. 
Councillor Fair, you have a declaration. Thank you. You have to conflict of interest on potential conflict of interest. Okay, thank you. This is page 50. This is in regards to a tender, in regards to a uh, side load refuse truck. 8C, page 50. Mr. Workington. Uh, this is uh, a, uh, a tender that was recently uh, issued by the City of Steinbeck for the uh, purchase of a uh, side load refuse truck that's uh, for residential services. Uh, the uh, tenders were opened on April 6, 2018 with three bids having been received uh, based on the review and information that is provided in the information package for Council. Recommendation uh, is that option two, bid by shoe pack uh, for the amount of $258,643 plus applicable taxes. Uh, be uh, be approved. Thank you. Council, how would you like to proceed? Councillor Penner. Move to approve. Thank you. Second by Councillor <coughs> Swagstra. Any discussion? Uh, no. It looks like it's under budget, so that's a good thing. Very good. Anything further from Council? All right. Call for the question. All those in favour? Carried. Thank you. We have 9A, we have the counts payable in the back of the book. You've all had a chance to review that. Can I have a motion to approve, please? Councillor Penner, seconded by Councillor Funk. Any discussion? Call for the question, all those in favor? Carried. We have the financial statements ending April 30th. Can I have a motion to approve, please? Councillor Funk, seconded by Councillor Penner. Any discussion? Call for the question, all those in favor? All right, on page 56, we have the building permits. Can I have a motion, please? Thank you. Move uh, second, uh, Councillor Fair, second by Councillor Siemens. Any discussion? Call, call for the question. All those in favor? Carried. 9D, the business licenses on page 58. Can I have a motion? There's a motion on page 58. You've all had a chance to review those. Councillor Penner, second by Councillor Siemens. Any discussion? No. Anything further from Council? All those in favour? We have the ex excavator licences on page 59. Can I have someone move that motion, please? Councillor Fair and Councillor Councillor Fair and Councillor Funk. Is there is there a motion? <laughs> is there any discussion on the motion? No. Can you explain to me why we give excavator licences? <laughs> Digging in our yard with it. All those in favor. He persuaded me. <laughs> Carried. All right, we have first reading of bylaw 2099. That's the, the official community plan on page 67. Mr. Workentine, I'll just give you, get you to briefly uh, state, state a few uh, statements here and then we'll move forward. Uh, sure. Uh, the, uh one of the, uh, the two primary planning documents that uh, the City of Steinbach reviews and approves on a regular basis is the official community plan. Uh, this is seen as the uh, primary strategic planning and land use document uh, for the City of Steinbach. Uh, the uh, Planning Act requires the City to review this document at least once every five years. Uh, although the City uh, recently did so uh, in 2015, the recent annexation that was approved by the province uh, has uh, prompted uh, further review at this time. Uh, and uh, for the primary purpose of addressing particular land use policy within the newly annexed area uh, that, uh, that was approved, uh, the, uh, a summary of the changes which uh, Council has reviewed at committee uh, is provided on pages uh, 71 and 72. Uh, the uh, changes are not significant. Uh, however, they, uh, the, uh, the uh, most important or most uh, critical ones are listed on those pages. Uh, the uh, recommendation from administration is that City Council approve first reading uh, of bylaw 2099. Uh, and uh, if uh, Council wishes to proceed, 
the uh, public hearing would be uh, scheduled for later in June. Thank you. Council, how would you like to proceed? Councillor Fair moves to approve. Seconded by Councillor Swagstra. Go ahead, Councillor Fair. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I know this has to come to second and third reading, but I want to commend uh, our administration for working with the people in the new uh, annex area. Uh, they were, I know that there were some people that had some concerns and, and the administration worked with them. And I, I believe that they uh, came to a very uh, uh, good uh, conclusion with them. And so I, I have to allow them to Thank you. Uh, Councillor Spanker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just briefly, the official community plan obviously sets our, our direction as a city. Uh, it's sort of that broader level, uh, that broader level picture. And obviously, we need to update it because of the fact that we've added uh, a couple thousand new acres to, uh, of property to the city. And so it makes sense that we review it. Uh, the, uh, we have made a few changes uh, in terms of uh, our preliminary discussions in regards to requiring uh, concept plans for developments in the in the reserve area, the development reserve, and such, and a few other changes too. And I look forward to hearing uh, from the general public, uh, both from the uh, the new citizens of Stymic and also people from the established areas, in regards to what they think of our community plan. Thank you. Further discussion. All right. Anything in closing? No. Council, uh, obviously with the new annexed area in the city of Steinbeck, it has created some work for us, but pleasant work. Uh, we get to look at, uh, uh, set the direction for our city through this document. This document is important. It's a guiding document for us as council as we make decisions. Uh, when it comes to the process, I think uh, this has been a good process. First of all, for us to review it. Second of all, for administration to review it. And third of all, to actually have that open house and get feedback. And we got a lot of feedback very specifically from the new residents of, of our city. And some of those, like Councillor Spikester mentioned, were, were adopted in uh, some of the changes for first reading. And so uh, we will go through now a public hearing process, which is, uh, again, wanting to hear further from people. And I think it's a, a good process that we've, got, we've been engaged in. And obviously, it allows for us to tweak the document to make sure it's uh, accurate and, and good for the growth of our city. Oh, for the question, all those in favor? Carried. Mr. Workman, you say it's middle of June or end of June that we will have a public hearing? Uh, it, uh, I believe it's June 19th. Thank you. It's the second council meeting of June. Thank you. Council will now go to 9G, that's the Community Places Grant application on page 74. Community Places, uh, of course, is the granting process that now municipalities are involved with uh, choosing. And so uh, look forward to seeing this application if you approve it. Would, uh, would you like to move uh, a motion to uh, apply? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Funk, second by Councillor Penner. I may as well just look over here all the time. For my <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> any discussion? Uh, just, just quickly through you, Mr. Thank you. This is a program that we have through the city where we renew our playgrounds, and this is money that's available from the province that we can uh, apply for, and I think we should uh, apply for any grant that we get a chance to. Absolutely. Thank you. Further discussion? Anything further from Council? Anything from Councillor Fair, do you agree? <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> Carried. Thank you. All right, we also have the uh, Community Places Grant for uh, the Aquatic Centre. This is on page 89. Can I have a motion to approve this, please? Councillor Penner, second by Councillor Penner. Any discussion? Uh, yes, this will help us um, do some renovations that are necessary for the Aquatic Centre. It's heavily used. And it also requires uh, maintenance so that we don't run into larger costs in the future. Thank you. Further discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Any questions of council? Uh, correspondence. We have uh, correspondence in regards to kids' sport uh, grant requests on page 102. Take that as information. We have the correspondence from the St. Rat River Conservation District. Uh, this is on page 103. Take that as information. Can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Councillor Funk and Councillor Fair. All those in favor? Gary, <laughs> thank you.